thanks for coming over. You're welcome. Alex, Glad to be here. Uh, I want to give you a compliment. It was your doggedness <laughs> and your goal to educate me that helped me identify and select another dire consequence that is in the makings besides this one. And that was what you call, most scientists call, ocean acidification. Correct. I tend to call it ocean change. That's fine. I have to be different. And I happen to think it's a more <laughs> powerful term, especially for the lay people. So how about explaining what carbon emissions is doing with ocean water to change it? Right. So as Jim Sweeney said, one of the goals of a, an academic should always be to educate everyone else around him uh, about what's going on, what the facts are, what the truth is, what what reality is. And the reality is that the carbon dioxide that's emitted, uh, we've emitted in the industrial age, last 150, 200 years, 1.8 trillion tons of carbon dioxide. And we can, there's no argument about where it came from because the isotopic analysis of the CO2 molecule tells you where the C came from, fossil, and where the O came from, air. So we know exactly where that what that source has been, are burning. And we also know the chemistry, when you, CO2 dissolves in water, like soda pop, uh, it acidifies. It lowers the, what they call the pH, the chemist calls the pH. Well, that's basic chemistry. But the reality of how the planet functions is that we depend upon carbon dioxide sequestration or carbon sequestration uh, done by living things by creatures in the ocean, primarily. Plants on the land are basically neutral because when they die, they drop their leaves, they get yeah. digested by <clears throat> microbes and the CO2 comes back out. But in the sea, we have animals that have shells, skeletons, all the way up to whales, and that carbonate skeleton okay. stores the carbon in the sea floor as limestone eventually. Yes. And that's the true sequestration that we depend upon okay. for about a billion tons a year, and our emissions are over 30 billion tons a year, so you get okay. the idea. So I get the idea <laughs> that the, uh, uh, the carbon dioxide mixes with the water, creates an acid, which makes it very, very difficult for any fish that needs calcium for its vertebrate, its shell, or, or whatever. Carbonate. And tell me, when do you think the ocean might reach a level, a state, when it may basically wipe out the base of the food chain and start a rapid destruction of the rest of the food. When do you think that might yeah, happen? That's, that's the real question. And what we're facing, because it's chemistry, it's not, we're, not, we're not arguing about temperature or anything like that. We're arguing, we're seeing the chemistry. The chemistry looks like before 2050, uh, we will have extinction events beginning that are very serious. Be, be, for what date was that? Before 2050. Before 2050. So the IPCC, for instance, doesn't really talk about acidification. They talk about 2100 temperatures, but that's really irrelevant if the oceans are dead by 2050. Okay, so you think the oceans might be dead before right. the temperature rises and has a great impact on well, temperature does have an impact on acidification because it's harder for the organisms to extract the carbonate if the water's warmer. So, okay. so anything that warms the whole planet adds to the problem that these organisms see. Okay. And we're halfway about to the extinction point now from the last okay. 200 years, and that's the problem. Okay, well, that process that you just described, yeah. it, I relied heavily on it when I made the painting, right. Ocean right. Change, which uh, will also be at the energy, uh, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley Energy Summit right. on June 25th. And it would be wonderful if they were to discuss what energy needs we need to develop quickly in order to meet that challenge before All 2050. Right. Alex Canara, thank you very much. Okay, Hi. we're done. Hi, I'm Michael Killen.